Okay, so today we're going to be covering the topic of um, uh, uterine and vaginal prolapse. So luckily, uh, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, what basically this is, is uh, you're going to have uh, a female patient who comes and she notices something protruding out of her vagina. Uh, so the key symptoms that you're going to find that's going to be related to any type of case is going to be first, there's going to be some type of vaginal protrusion. And then uh, next, there's going to be probably going to be uh, postmenopausal. And the whole reason why it's very common postmenopausal is during this period, uh, there's going to be atrophy of the of vagina and the uterus. And so there's an increased likelihood that it will protrude as it gets weaker and uh, thinner and uh, even the ligaments that are holding it up tend to weaken. Uh, so from here, so these are the symptoms that are common to all the different types of uh, prolapses. So from here, depending on extra symptoms that they may have, uh, you will have other types of symptoms. So uh, one that you would also maybe get, say they have urinary related symptoms. So if there's, they might have some urinary uh, retention or incontinence, uh, retention or incontinence. Uh, then what you would be thinking is going to be a cystocele. Okay, so and if that's not the case, uh, so say for example, you, it's a vaginal protrusion to postmenopausal, but instead of having urinary tension, they might have constipation. Or they might have to uh, digitally uh, impact uh, their vagina in order for them to uh, defecate. So this is going to be called a rectocele. And so already you can see that the rectum is involved. And for cystocele, you can see cysto means bladder. So there's going to be uh, uh, involvement of um, the bladder there. One second. Let me get this. Okay. And next, uh, so say they're going to have some type of abdominal pain associated with uh, decreased bowel movements um, and things like that. That's going to be an enterocele. So enterocele means that the small bowel is involved. And this is when you have uh, the pouch of Douglas involved. And finally, it might be vague symptoms of pelvic pressure, and this is probably going to be a uh, uterine prolapse. So here are your general types of uh, prolapses that we can begin with. And so we'll go into each one, um, I guess, one by one. So the first one that um, uh, we have, so before we begin, actually, because we do need to review the anatomy real quick of the... Um, vaginal area here to uh, be able to appreciate the differences. So here first we have the bladder is uh, located in the front. So here is your bladder so you can see it's it's in the front. Then we have the uh, vaginal canal and above the vaginal canal usually uh, facing forward is the entire uterus. And behind it, we, immediately behind it we have the rectum here. And this area right here is the pouch of Douglas. So this is the pouch of Douglas. So this is a general um, anatomy of the uh, female genital tract. So next, what we're going to do is let's let's talk about um, cystocele, and then we can then we'll move on to rectocele. So what happens in cystocele is you're going to have involvement of the bladder. So here is the bladder right here. And in this picture, they haven't drawn the uterus, but you know th this is, you know, in the case of someone having uh, an hysterectomy, because it's common as we'll get to that in those type of patients. So what you can see is the anterior wall here has gone downwards, and it has dragged the cystocele, uh, the, the bladder as well. And so this is why uh, this is uh, what we call cystocele. So one thing you can remember is the cystocele involves the anterior wall. And um, if we take a look at a rectocele, so let's get a rectocele going here. So if you, if you compare the um, cystocele and the rectocele, you can see that the bladder here is completely normal. And what's happening is the posterior wall is protruding out and you have the rectocele coming down. So as the cystocele is the anterior vaginal wall, the rectocele involves the posterior wall. And now you can see why you would have 
uh, problems defecating because a lot of the uh, feces will be impacted here, it can't get out and so digitally, you know, um, wow, I don't know what happened okay, anyways, uh, digitally, uh, you know, with your finger, if, if the uh, patient pushes this way, it can cause the feces to come out and here as well, if they're having uh, urinary retention or incontinence by pushing their finger inwards, it'll help some of the urine come out. So both of these are um, uh, very pathognomonic of these types of um, prolapses. Now in pterosil, in this situation, we have the actual um, small intestine uh, protruding through. So as you can see here, uh, this is the rectum over on this side. Here we have the uterus and here we have the bladder. You can see that the, the small intestine has gone through the pouch of Douglas and come out this way. So this is also you can consider a posterior uh, a posterior protrusion but the posterior wall is not involved because the posterior wall is actually here. It's the this is the actual pouch of Douglas uh, coming down. Okay so these are the three different types um, anterior posterior and the pouch of Douglas and finally we get into the uterine prolapse. Uh, the uterine prolapse is basically the uh, anterior and posterior wall aren't related directly, uh, but you just have the entire uterus coming down, um, usually as a result of uh, a failure of the um, uh, the fascia that usually hold up the organs. They, get, they tend to get weaker and fail. So um, in this uterine prolapse, uh, what you will notice is that there's different grades depending on which level it is in. So here is the normal way, so we've already kind of looked at that. And by the way, here's the rectum, here's the bladder, this is the pouch of Douglas. So a very mild form is the grade one. So that's this one right here. So in grade one, um, it's very mild. So usually they say it's going to be above the halfway mark, above one half of the introitus. So it's above the halfway mark, and in grade two, it goes below the halfway mark. So in grade two, it goes below the one half of introitus. Finally, in grade three, let's just do the grade three in red. So in grade three, what you notice is it's finally going to be actually poking out of the uh, vagina. So in grade three, you actually have it outside it's not completely outside and the final one grade four which is this one here uh, this is when it's grade four which is going to be all outside and this is also known as um, precedentia precedentia is when there's uh, and precedentia is basically there's complete failure of genital support and the entire uterus is uh, bulging out of the vagina um, and so with, with uterine prolapse, there are some, you know, in, th in this situation, they tend to have a uh, complaint of heaviness, uh, maybe pressure in the pelvis. Um, this, uh, the, the other thing is, this tends to increase uh, when standing all day. So by the end of the day, if they've been walking, it's going to be uh, increasing and it's going to uh, decrease when they lay down. So these are um, uh, also... Uh, some features of uh, the prolapses. Okay, so now uh, what are some things that can cause? So let's talk about some causes of this. We'll go into uh, go causes. So the uh, one, you know, the one of the causes is going to be vaginal birth. Uh, what happens when you give vaginal birth is there's well, what's going on? Okay. Okay, I'm not sure. So vaginal birth. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not working. Uh, so vaginal birth is one cause of uh, this. And basically what's happening is during birth, uh, there's increased stretch. And this is going to be most common if they've used, uh, let's try a different color. Okay. Uh, if they've used any type of forceps or vacuum. So let's see, stretch. Okay. I'm um, not sure what's going on. Okay, sorry, I was, uh, okay, I see what happened. Okay, increased stretch, and this is going to be uh, most common when they've used forceps or vacuum, because, you know, when you use forceps or vacuum, it puts a lot of pressure on the, um, 
uh, the uterus and the vagina and it pushes it down and it can tear or weaken some of the uh, ligaments there. Uh, the other thing is going to be old age. Old age is a uh, is a way, you know, something that can cause it. Again, we're talking about the low estrogen, uh, which usually causes atrophy and weakening of um, that entire genital area. Uh, so this is postmenopausal patients, of course. Uh, the other thing can be some history of pelvic surgery. Uh, so when they did the surgery, they could have weakened uh, some of the uh, things that are going on there. Uh, they say increased pressure. So this is going to be obesity, tumors, uh, anything that can increase the pressure on there. And finally, certain types of collagen disorders uh, can lead to this. Um, so what are the types of treatments? Uh, in the, you, you have two types. Uh, first, we have the conservative type. This is going to be, uh, firstly, they can do something called Kegel exercises. In Kegel exercises, what they do is they contract the uh, pubococcygeus muscle, which will help uh, you know, build up the diaphragm and uh, push, keep up the, uh, all the parts where they're supposed to be. Uh, second, if they're postmenopausal, you can give estrogen. Uh, of course, this would only be if they're postmenopausal. Uh, and finally, you can also give something called a pessary. Uh, what a pessary does is it's a little object which uh, you insert into the vagina and it keeps everything up. So I have a quick image here. So as you can see, here's your pessary and it just, it's like a stop cock. It keeps everything there and uh, prevents it from going down. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a one way you can treat it. And finally, um, if all those fails, you'll do surgery. Um, you're primarily going to do a hysterectomy because if there is no uterus, then how can it fall? And also you're going to probably want to if it's a cystocele, you're going to want to, uh, you know, repair the anterior wall, and if, and if it's a uh, rectocele, you're going to want to uh, repair the posterior wall. So depending on the situation, you might want to do an anterior or a posterior repair. So that was pretty quick. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.